Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Margaret aka Paint Pops and today we're going to be continuing with our design system series where we're going to be going over UI components. If you're not familiar with components, they're UI design elements that are typically used over and over again across your product. A good rule of thumb I like to set for myself when deciding what should be a component is whether or not it exists in at least three places across my product. For a lot of smaller companies, it might not actually make a ton of sense to invest a lot of time and energy into putting together an entire design system. Um, but they do often start with, at the very least, a component library. It makes things easier for the engineers so they're not coding the same button from scratch every single time. And then also for designers, you can quickly put together high fidelity wireframes. It also keeps everything consistent. So if you were to pass along your files to another designer or engineer, they'll be able to grab from the same library. A good methodology for thinking about component libraries is the atomic design system and I've included a link in the description below if you want to read more about it. Now, if you learn about atoms in science class, they're essentially the building blocks of all matter, something that you can't break down any further into smaller parts. In the case of components, that can be things like buttons, input fields, icons, or labels, which are some of the most basic design elements. You can then assemble multiple of these atomic elements together to create a molecule, such as a button with an icon or an input field that also contains a label. You can even put all of that together to create a mini form for where people can sign up for something like a mailing list. Then you can go on to build organisms, which are distinct sections comprised of multiple molecules. So things like headers, footers, forms, and such. With your component library, the objective is to build out all these basic UI components, as well as their assembled components so that they can easily be reusable in the future if you need to flow in some different text, imagery, or iconography. Today, I'm going to be going over how I build my library in Figma, which is the tool that I use most often for my design work, but the same concepts apply to Sketch, Adobe XD, or whatever design program that you prefer. So first, within my design system file, I've created a separate page for my components, and I like to organize my components by category. So. For example, I would group everything related to form fields together in its own frame. I've also organized components by sticky headers, cards, notifications, and dialogues in the past, so do so in whatever way you feel that makes sense in the context of your product or how your wireframes are organized. This also makes it easier to locate components when you're trying to link to them from a wireframe. Figma is able to categorize them automatically because you put the related components in the same frame. It not only makes it easier for you to find the components, but also whoever else is looking at your file. So consider that when deciding how to arrange your library and also how to name your categories. For things like icons, I also like to add another layer of organization by dividing it up into icon types. You can do this by adding a forward slash after the icon type. So for example, let's say that these belong only in the global navigation. I can then name the component global nav slash profile. When I link back to this in my wireframe, I would be able to find the component under icons, global nav, profile. The sample icons you see here are also from a plugin called Material Design Icons, where you can just drag and drop them into your Figma file. I know not everyone is super familiar with how to illustrate icons, and quite frankly, Figma is probably not the best tool for doing that. Many UX or UI designers do use pre-made icons, and I think that's totally okay, as long as you have the rights to use them. If it feels like it's taking forever to create one, or it's just not your cup of tea, there's a bunch of options online. I've illustrated my own to have more control over the look and feel, and because depending on how niche your product is, there might not always be something that's readily available that matches what you need and comes in a pre-made set so that everything looks consistent. Within Figma, you can also create variants to save you even more time on building components. So if I have a button, for example, I can set a primary button style and then create a variant of it when the button is disabled or if it's hovered over or anything else. Going back to Atomic Design, for example, I can decide that I want this button to include another component, like an icon, and then create a property called icon with the values yes or no. This is also good for things like input fields, if you want to show variants or when it is selected, 
um, or if it has an error message is left blank or is filled in. When I bring this into my design file, I can easily select the variants I need while using the same base component. Generally, the fewer base components I need to create, the better, so I usually just create more variants instead. Once you get the hang of building out components, they can get more complex. For example, if you take a look at a Reddit post, you can see how the page is organized and where your component blocks are. You have your header component, which is comprised of other icon components, a component for the community avatar and also the title, um, your username and time of post. There's also a separate component displaying just awards given to the poster. Then there's the actual post component, which can contain a title, image, text blocks, link, video, or any combination of the above. Then you have a separate component for interactions with the post, whether it be upvoting or downvoting it, a number of comments, ability to share or give an award. You got your comment section. So if you notice this component here with the user avatar, the name of the user and the time of the post is essentially what's at the very top of the post. So it's not like the designers came up with a totally different UI to treat the two. And the avatar component appears again at the bottom for you to leave a comment. The last thing I want to add is that I sometimes include notes in my component library so that any other engineer or designer looking at the file can tell how this component should generally be used. This can include things like toast messages should always be manually dismissed, or they should only appear after the user has interacted with the page in some way, and maybe even include some animation guidelines. So there you have it. The component library in your design system is likely going to be the part that's the most often updated as you introduce new features. But because the purpose of it is to introduce consistency across your product and to save development and design time, I recommend thinking carefully before creating too many new components once you already have a pretty good foundation. So are there any atoms or molecules that you can recycle to serve the same function of a feature that you're designing? It's also more recognizable for your users so that they don't have to learn as many new components when they're using your product. Thanks for sticking around and until next time, bye.